finance bill passed because it was uh, introducing many taxes from the finance bill that eventually the president refused to assent to. Now the protesters are saying, no, 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 we now want you to Ruto must go. So Mr. Seven understands that this protest may start around the parliament, but since he knows it's the problem of Uganda, that's eventually where it will end. So parliament, I think, is just to spark off protests eventually to deal with the real problem affecting Uganda. And that's why Ruto, in his own narrow thinking, he thought when you don't sign the finance bill in Turo, when you um, dissolve your own cabinet, matters will end. They are saying, actually, Ruto, you must go yourself. Even in Uganda, and I hope this protest will happen, they will eventually end with Museveni because Museveni is the problem. Museveni amanyi burungi, nti wana wana awagalo kwe karakasa. Echizibu chavu si paramen. Echizibu chavu, obubi, buwe sente yomu uo msolo, atenga Museveni, ya wukule mbede. Museveni sende zawa abantu mu budget. Katu wakamolo kuisa wano budget. Ya wade magora, bogata wamu, bilion irusamu. Na wami, ya kawa mino wati yaka, bilion ibitano. Ya kawa, Profesor Muranga mwagenda, kutandika kutunda matoke, ngaga kozemu, obuunga, bilion chikumu bili. Uganda, elimu kusasura Democratic Republic of Congo, 1.2 trillion. Ororo talo, ororo alo andi wai, wasalimu salavo, ni wanyaga yogoro, dine timba. So msefe ni amanyiburu unji, niti yavaa na wano. Bowa kilizo kwe karakasa, wako ze sapala menenze gubanona. Kubanga, mulirano hawa tenga mkwano kwe ruto. Yaloo za antio kwe karakase Kenya, kulikuteka iteka we misoro. Naga asiri jadi saini inga, awa newe yongiro kwe karakase. Nago wa kabineni. Kakati ya sigara wa tanego, wana mga antia anawe wegobe, protest with Joe Koma. Kati msefe ni achitakira ulu nchichizibu cha Uganda. Parliament ya wandu wa jokujawe karakase na eventually wa jokunu nyechizibu jechiri atenga amanyi echizibu. I place no man cash. I'm called Mosila John from the east of the country, Buburo. Uh, East uh, County in the Misindwa District, Bugisu region. Now, your questions are very pertinent and at this particular moment. To the extent that if I were parliamentary administrator, I wouldn't have a session tomorrow. Actually, management of parliament, administration of parliament, should rethink uh, to avoid the situations, to avoid the circumstances. That's number one. Number two, the youth have a right according to our constitution to demonstrate. But suppose it degenerates into a riot. We don't have the law that uh, Ugandans are supposed to riot. No. Thirdly, you should know that what the youth of Uganda, we given all levels of where they can air out whatever they want to air, including demonstration, which is their liberty and freedom. They can also simply degenerate into a riot which will infringe on the rights of other citizens. The president was categorically right when he spoke about this. And two, to me, my only thinking, this is not in good faith because it is simply contagious from the other neighboring state. It's contagious about the Gen Z's and whatever the case, which is not right. But otherwise, demonstration, I support. The issues they may have about corruption, all of us are out. By the way, people uh, will flash us as corrupt, as parliament, all of us. Not all of us. I was among the first to sign the censure motion as against the commissioners. And many of us have done so. There is also a fight against corruption. You see? So to me, my advice to our youth, given the channels they have, they should complain. And they are right, and nobody should block them from complaining. But you can't only complain uh, through demonstrations, through uh, possibly avenues which can easily degenerate into rioting. They could have a genuine reason or reasons, and they could have a genuine mind come out to demonstrate. Suppose the goons. Uh, overtook them. Suppose the Lumpens came up to destroy what we saw in Kenya, including even the Uganda House, by the way, getting destroyed. So to me, I stand with the youth for any reasons they have. But for demonstrating to parliament, we may not help much. As parliament, even if it is against us, yes, it is against a few of us, not all of us, a few of us, a handful actually, 
just a handful of us. So why should others uh, be punished for sins of those who are killing? You see that? The parliament of Uganda is for you Ugandans. The proper of Uganda is for you younger people. We want to appeal that killing yourselves and get to the lane that this is your country. The parliament of Uganda, I was not here when it started. I was born three years after independence. And today I'm here. And you will be here as well. You will be at the district level. I started as a chairman of the district. And like that. The avenues and the channels of the youth in Uganda are all over. If you check parliament today, most parliamentarians are below 50 years of age. Actually, it's a very youthful parliament in East Africa. We have youth within the parliament. We have also youth at district level, even at sub-county level. All these levels can be used, including even the parallel channels, parallel channels like the youth councils and whatever. And their voice shouldn't be muzzled. We don't like that the voice of the youth, the 70% population of this country by our demographies should be muzzled. No, I cannot support that. But I wish to say you should be able to desist from anything which can degenerate into destruction of property or even lives. Or I see a lot of deployment around in readiness for such circumstances because the youth chose 23rd, having known that parliament would resume sessions on 23rd. But I want to advise Parliament again, a clarion call. We would avoid, and we can avoid confrontations. Why can't we push the recess one week later until the situation cools down, until we hear from the youth? And those responsible, especially the executive, yes, this clarion call is good to you. The youth voice must be heard, and they should. And this is the time between maybe one week or two weeks. Village, where you live, and uh, they give you, even if it is 50 million, you will not ask how much money was approved for your cooperative. You will actually go back happy. So that's, that's the bulk of the report. The, the specific accusation against the, the PS uh, is that she was receiving money through her husband. So payments were being made to law firm, and then they would go to deposit the part of the money to the account of her husband. Obviously, the committee said she was the beneficiary. The husband was just being used as a, as a conduit. In the case of the MPs, I think one of them is a lawyer. But there are also many other people who are mentioned in that report. I think the MPs who are mentioned were more than 40. Um, I don't know if all of them are going to be taken. But there are about 40 MPs involved because there was a, <clears throat> some serious work to go and look for these cooperatives where they existed. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Uh, and, and where there they, they are no people and they, they knew they existed, then you, you look for the cooperative, but also you look for people to claim it. And then you, you resurrect it, uh, get paperwork done, and then you present it for, mm. for claim. So, so in the summary, so, that's, that's uh, what they That's report. what it is. Yeah. Are, are you people in parliament hiding and, and, and waiting to, to f or in fear of being arrested? I don't know. In, in all these cases, I am not sure that everybody will be arrested. Mm. Um, I, I was with a friend the other day and they told me, people are, are negotiating for me, don't arrest me. Um, mm. For me, I, so people are making offers. Either I will be the one delivering each other to you in the next election. <laughs> um, so I am not sure that everybody is going to be arrested. Mm. But you may also not have evidence against everybody. The, you can mention them in a report because the reports of parliament are not legal, I mean, legal documents. Mm. For you politically, you can mention everybody who is mentioned. But when you go to assemble evidence, you may not have evidence against everybody. But there are many people who are mentioned. Okay. Uh, Dr. Mumuza, that report also uh, 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 points out that uh, Mrs. Uh, Sali Busura also had uh, a verification committee of her own in parallel to the one appointed by cabinet. I think that's why now the governance issues come in. And as I said, once you have no clear policy, because institutions are supposed to be implementing policy, now you don't even have a policy, you have a decision. 
Now that decision was not followed up by structures in how is this decision going to be made. Mm. That's why as Honorable has mentioned, anybody creates a cooperative. But there should have been a register of cooperatives. Because you, when you read through the report, they really come from before independence. Uh, the cooperatives were created by government, individuals, and all sorts of fellows who put them in place. And it, it's even shocking that a cooperative could be started and owned by an individual. Because the word cooperative it itself means more than one individual, more than one family. So there must have been that register. And we had ministries <coughs> at one point, the Ministry of Agriculture is in taking care of them. You have the Ministry of Cooperatives and Marketing itself. So I want to believe people who were ministers at that time had a register, who had a commission of cooperatives. The structure should have been begin with that list. What was there? <coughs> what did they own? Mm. Now, the moment you leave that fuzzy, then the frogs are going to come on the table. Somebody will do their own thing. So possibly the, 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 the PS also took that advantage to say, let me set up a parallel system here. And of course, she's been... Uh, embroiled in so many other internal mm. with the in, internal systems in that ministry and elsewhere in the ministry itself uh, it's also a question of the too much power that people concentrate around themselves because ministries have worked in government there are structures you're supposed to follow there is a top technical in every ministry there's a top management where the ministers come but there are departments there are directorates you, where you have a commission of cooperatives <coughs> the commissioner should be having that history mm. and inventory I remember my, my journey through the Ministry of Finance. You would get a, a, a directive really from the president. But then you see this directive as the minister is saying, review and make a brief for me. It is referring to so many other ministries. Some of them are defunct, some people are gone, but the records will be there. Yeah. So when you would call these individuals, they would say, ah, wait, that matter came to cabinet, that matter came here. That. You also write to the president and ask for more time. Because now you have to engage some civil servants, another one tell you I'm on holiday, this one traveled abroad. But everybody is really saying, if you want issues on that matter, it is so and so, not even that office. And a wealth of information will come from that individual. So I wish she had followed that procedure to say, where did this one begin? The report of parliament would actually have been her report to discover mm. that some of the lists lined up as cooperatives never existed. Yeah. So those are the kinds of things to but, say. But my question, how did it end up in her ministry and not in Ministry of Finance? No, because in the Ministry of Cooperatives, you know, government, the first thing you raise is, it's my mandate. Mandate comes with power, mandate uh, comes with money. Yes. It's my mandate. And somebody, every government document sometimes begins with quoting the law. <coughs> so you, you want to grab it, especially when there are monies like this involved. I know my friend Ramadan has had troubles of compensation. He says, but I'm the person paying. So you as a minister establish who I should pay. Bring them to me. I will pay them. Just like uh, civil servants. Mm. You tell me who do you have. We know their bank account. We can send their money there. But somebody will say, no, you give me the money. And I pay. And I pay. I am the minister of lands. I want to pay. You've seen it here. They are saying Attorney General was paying. Where does the Attorney General, whatever office, end up and saying the following mm. should be paid? Then finance can send that list to the Treasury and say, these are the accounts of people. And that way, you begin also to avoid pay the lawyer, and then the lawyer will pay the other parties. Didn't the other parties have an account? Or can't they open an account? So you're really walking into mud and the swamp. And in a swamp, as we all know, there is no route. Mm. Where you find it shallow is where you take. Where <laughs> it is deep, you disappear. <laughs> then somebody says, we are seven. How come we are four? Anyway, people mm. go. You want to avoid that in government. Yeah. Honor, the, uh, the assembly says you're in the private sector. Do you <laughs> see these shenanigans from afar? Yeah, first of all, Oscar, it's always nice to return home. After yes. Nearly 30 years. <laughs> I was here as a regular. Yes. So I'm a blast from the past. Uh, I think uh, growing yeah, up... Just, just going back to the 30 years, you know, there's a veteran <laughs> who told me that we forgot to celebrate Capital Gang at 30 years. Where, where did you used to sit in, in those days? No, we in which used city? To sit house ah, not, here. not in here so both me and capital gang have yeah. changed a lot uh, yes I was then like same with you more or less mm. uh, critical of the establishment down the road i well, had well, things well, well, were you as noisy <laughs> as i was more noisy but i mellowed i've mellowed with time 
<laughs> even 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 Semuju has mellowed. When you have Ag- <laughs> last week I had Agatha Nafka. I nearly died in the studio. And, yeah. and Semuju was the quiet one. The but to the story, to the story, yeah. to the story mm. under discussion. I think for me the two words are really painful. That is cooperatives mm. and compensation. Mm. You know, I come from Tesla, actually I live there. I've just come to the Kampala once in a while. And the biggest word there has always been compensation. And up to today, people are crying for compensation for war losses. Mm. So when you hear billions being spoken about individuals having billions, then you wonder where they get this money, where they get the root, and the people who genuinely seem to have lost are not getting anything. Cooperatives was a big issue. We we thrived on cotton, and cooperatives managed a straightforward affair. You simply grew your cotton, and you had a cooperative store within walking distance, and, and you go and sell your cotton. So I've not heard of Tesla Cooperative Union being compensated. Maybe some of you knows better. <laughs> so in this story, are there some, some of you will help me, are there some cooperatives which are genuine? which have been compensated and they are isolated they are, cases but you see the, the trouble mm. even where genuine claims mm. existed and were made mm. they also exaggerated mm. so you you may have lost a uh, property worth a mm. one billion but those who are processing will tell you please claim seven so, so those, so, those stories are also so in so i think for but 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 honor's mm. line is completely different he's mm. saying teso has missed out so they might have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, 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 policy, the policy was put on hold because of this, mm. but it was still ongoing. See? Yeah. So, but I think the bigger story is what we are all familiar with the, the scams that some people have specialized in cooking up in, in, in government, the ghost stories that have existed for decades. And the, the saddest bit then is to hear that parliament, where the people are supposed to, to run for salvation is at the epicenter of the, of the corruption. But uh, I think someone has already pointed out, looking at it from a private sector view, this is complete failure of corporate governance. You know? yeah. I think in government, none other than the president is crying every day about corruption. So if even the chief executive... <laughs> <laughs> it's at a loss. So we are in trouble. Yeah. We are in trouble as a nation. And I think, uh, same with you, if you still has room to salvage anything, the, the, the urgency couldn't be more. Mm. And it's, it's quite, it's, it's shocking. Uh, how does someone get the audacity to create a cooperative and then you pocket the money? I mean, and you still go to sleep, you still have a decent meal with your family and and feel all is well. Mm. I know we all love money, but this is just, it's, this is more than loving money. This is outrageous. Mm. So, f- looking at it from a private sector point of view, you, you, you just see that it's systemic, it's systemic, and we need to <coughs> yeah. take, a deep, of words. take a deep breath. We, we have a warrior here, Agatha. Uh, at Hare, you, 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 you've been a warrior against, you know, when this fa- fa- story came out, I was thinking, maybe Parliament broke it, you'll have some nice words about Parliament, finally. Um, but, but a report comes out, in <laughs> I'm talking the impossible. <laughs> so, Ona, don't worry too much, there are some warriors here, yeah, led... One of the leaders but, is like the, the tragedy so, in this country that the warriors tend to fall along the way. <laughs> is it is it just a tragedy in this country? I think warriors will get exhausted and tired at some point in any country. I, I don't know if Oscar is saying we should credit Parliament for bringing it out, but... Um, why, why, why would it take this long for, for that, action exactly, to happen? That's what I was going to ask This is a report you. of so this 2023, report, October. This report mm. was... Um, the speaker gave these instructions for the trade committee to investigate this in August 2023. And the report came out in October 2023. Mm. You should ask yourself why it was never debated on the floor of parliament. Oh, it wasn't debated? No, it was not. That's why we are just, people are talking about it now. Um, 
Uh, Honorable Samuju here said that um, many people are in, uh, implicated in that report. And indeed, the things I had before this report came out were that that report was actually amended to, to absolve some people. Um, I tried to look for the original copy and failed, but there, there are bigger fish that the were... The or the original? Because the original would be the one saying, maybe the draft. Yeah, I mean, the initial report that had everyone that is involved, yeah. the one that was amended to remove some names. Well, because I have not yet gotten that evidence, I'm not going to mention the names, but there were bigger fish and bigger monies mm -hmm. involved in that. And it was amended to remove uh, 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 now, In my introduction, I was about to say, this time there's no conspiracy theory I have from never, Agatha. I've but never given you any conspiracy <laughs> theories. You, you didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar just, uh, I don't know. But I have never, I like to say things that I am sure about. But that, I have, I am sure, I, I'm, I'm sure that the report that ended up, that we have ended up with, mm. is not what was discussed. But also, uh, when it came up in October, the Speaker of Parliament on the floor, said that she has decided to send the report to CID. And Honorable Samuju is here as a senior legislator. He might help us enlighten us on what, where the speaker uh, got the, the, the powers to send a report. Because now it's not yet a report of parliament. If it was not tabled on the floor and discussed, the rules... So it's a document in parliament. Don't mm. anywhere say... The, the, the rules that the, the, the reports of parliament follow. It's tabled on the floor, it is debated, it is adopted, but it was instead uh, she, say, she sat and said she was sending it to the CID and everyone knew that was illegal, that was ultra-virus but no one um, challenged that. So that's why we are, I think this is ten mon eight months later or nine it's when we are hearing about, about that report and we are hearing about it when the people that wanted to save themselves already saved themselves and you know the ones they want to take a fall for it uh, maybe are the ones that we are seeing now uh, when we talk about uh, uh, Geraldine Sally now who is the latest um, it's, it's the things we say here every day that the president is not interested in fighting corruption there was another issue that Geraldine Usuro was uh, involved in uh, about renovation of uh, of uh, farmer's house, which cost about four billion, I think, when renting other premises would have cost slightly higher than that, and um, and that's when the minister of finance, um, uh, the, the the minister of finance, um, interdicted her, and the president in October wrote again and and instructed that they reinstate her. So you are not letting um, institutions work. And, and that cannot fight corruption. I think we will be we will only be serious as a country if everyone that is involved in that report, the law firms that we have seen, the MPs, even those that that edited themselves out of the report, and 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 uh, I don't know how that remains the the best chairperson of a committee if under his watch something like that happens. Uh, because I, you can't say that uh, Honorable Mwine Mpaka didn't know about that or doesn't know that. Maybe the, the report doesn't include all the people that it should include. But yeah, we are not serious about fighting corruption and we, le we let one person be the one to say, give the word whenever they feel fed up with you, Oscar, they can say, but if they are not, they will, say, they will tell every agency and institution that is there to fight corruption, leave my people, they are corrupt by mistake, and that can't be uh, a serious, we can't, mm. take, we can't take ourselves as serious as a country in fighting the endemic of corruption which has led to where we are. We want to discuss a, a match, a, a planned match by Gen Z here. Who think that we have, they have failed to get any other avenues of these issues being addressed? Who see that you have a plethora of, of institutions to fight corruption that we spend money on that don't do anything because you do not let them. And every day instead you think that you are going to resolve that by creating uh, more and more. Thank mm. you. Mercy. Um, thank you very much. And I think I'll digress just a little bit on that. I never thought I would um, live to really see evidence of political corruption and its semblance to bureaucratic corruption. And I think this candle paints that picture 
very well. Say some more on the two yeah. corruptions, but because, what do you mean? Because the political mm. is the misuse and abuse of power and privilege by people like um, the members of parliament and policy makers that uh, influence processes that may seem legal at the surface, but at the tail end they are meeting personal interests. And bureaucracy is, you know, abusing government systems and procedures, you know, in the same way. And so here you are looking at uh, the peers and the other administrative officers heavily involved in a process that is also equally led and manipulated by parliament that has certain powers that are supposed to check these processes. And so if you study the report in depth and you look at the irregularities, you cannot place them on one side. You cannot place them entirely on parliament. You will see the list of MPs that are involved in one way or the other in this process. And then you will also see administrators who are equally involved directly, but also their families, their associates playing a very heavy role. And then there's an introduction of the legal fraternity, the, the law firms. And actually, when my, my brother here was talking about TESO, uh, when these scandals come, I always, with bias, look for West Nile in the scandal. This time, I saw a Okoro <laughs> Coffee, um, a cooperative in Zombo, uh, that was compensated, I think, 1.6 billion, and then the law firm took about 670 something <laughs> a million in addition to a retainer fee of, wow. of, of 5 million per month. This is how obscene this situation is. And so, in to understand how endemic corruption is, is to see how these two blend very perfectly in a scandal like the one we are seeing now. And this is what makes fighting graft very difficult. Uh, one time I was on a talk show and somebody said, um, there's something called tenderpreneurship. Somebody comes up with an idea on their mind that can potentially be funded by government and that will benefit them. They will work backwards to ensure, one, that we have a policy. Uh, they do all the... Um, uh, they do all the homework about how this could come to life and they will successfully influence this policy and the processes around it and then it comes to life like the cooperatives issue has come to life it it, it looked legal because it, it followed the policy process and all of this even when we know that most of the cooperatives in the report were non-existent but you can see that there are so many people behind this initiative by how much they've been able to take out of it and so addressing corruption becomes even more difficult because they are layers and layers of um, actions, individuals, processes, and structures involved in enabling corruption. And we can be blinded because of the recent uh, issues that are coming out to say it is probably more centered here. But when you read reports like this one, you realize that it has arms and legs elsewhere as well. And so addressing it would mean that the eyes have to be on a bigger ecosystem. And I can, yeah, and I can agree <laughs> with Agatha that nobody is interested in doing that work. And that is the very unfortunate uh, part about this matter. Ah, interesting. Benjamin Katana. Uh, thank you, Oscar. <laughs> I have had the benefit of uh, reading the report, but also listening to the background to this problem as laid down by the Honorable Semuju here. And uh, this scandal is just another example of abuse of process and institutions. And they speak to a bigger problem of state capture, where you have narrow group interests taking control of institutions and policy processes. Because when you look at... Uh, Is it... Uh, you know, to your you said you must work with the chapati. And the chapati. <laughs> I am now fearing because he's, if he's a pioneer of capital gang and he walks in with his tea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, but, but. This is not Bowman, Bowman House. Yeah. Uh, and so you, you realize that this is just budgeted corruption. This money to be introduced, the idea to be introduced probably the intention 
was create a, a cash bonanza and this has gained a lot of traction to, to, today i'm learning very new terms is political corruption what did you say the other one is my say Bureaucratic. 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 Now you have said budgeted <laughs> corruption. Yes, people will come and explain, but that money is in the budget. Ah. But when the motivation was to create an avenue. The, the other day we for nearly killed Semoju here when he was saying those that money is in the budget. When he was talking about your man. Mm. And that uh, is budgeted corruption. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, recently I had uh, the head of state complaining that. Parliament is tinkering with the budget process. But the problem is bigger than that. That you have people who sit at the finance ministry working with heads of agencies, accounting officers in these agencies, create some avenues of stealing money, like this one we are talking about of cooperatives. And I think the bigger problem is that this has been a journey. What we are seeing now are fruits of impunity that we have had money lost no action taken even when there is semblance of action taken it is lukewarm and dies along the way you remember the gavi scandal those who are older than me remember the dance scandal involving the nra those who have been around know the compensation scandal involving the former employees of ISO. You are talking about law firms now, but there are also law firms previously that have received billions of money for people and that money never reached. The compensations in uh, northern Uganda for victims of war. So the, 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 the challenge is that this impunity has been here. People have stolen government money and nothing has been done on account of political expedience. And even when it comes to taking action, Sometimes it is selective, giving an impression that all you need is to make sure that you're on the right side of politics or the right side of blood relations and friendship, so that this will accord you protection from what normally is called the long arm of justice. So we, this, because of the magnitude of the money is involved, mm -hmm. has generated a lot of debate and interest and even some analysts have pointed out that maybe it is also just being used as an avenue to further temperament and have it where the executive wants it but like oscar likes to say that could be <laughs> a conspiracy theory but the there are so many cases of corruption that go on unpunished and the state of uganda has the means and the mechanism to detect corruption we have all these agencies that have people who work for them the challenge is that most times these agencies are part of the corruption that you have people who are running the accounts of state institutions working in cahoots with people that are doing audit working in cahoots with people at the inspectorate of government working with people that are running intelligence agencies because the president the chief executive is a consumer of intelligence he knows who is stealing what he knows who is investing in what and therefore government should know where that money has come from when you're opening a small account and depositing five million they will ask you for a source of income mm. but we have all these people that are stealing government money putting up hotels putting up cathedrals for homes and nobody is asking them where they are getting money from. All we have had is a person that should be taking action against these people, praising some of them for being hardworking. And so, uh, my colleague here mentioned the lack of political will. At this stage, even if there is will from the from Mr. Seven, who is running the country, I think the. NRM government and the country is dealing with what political scientists call political decay. That the system is incapable of reform and adapting to change. It needs to be overhauled. Because where will it stop? Because if you, you say that you're going to deal with corruption cases, you, <laughs> save for one who has presidential immunity under the constitution, you'll find that everyone else running government and their family members are involved 
we have had cases and uh, on this show the capital gang have on many occasions had people make reference to a number of scandals that have happened previously the hel the junk helicopters uh, names were mentioned and no action is taken and the person says this one apologized so the the, the question is why should the law only act if it is this individual involved and the law is not applied when it's the other individual involved now that leads to public losing confidence in the fight against corruption and as such even when genuine actions are taken they are not looked at as genuine actions because of the track record of the people that are running the affairs of the state hmm. so w w what what way forward uh, do you see let me, let me start i don't know Masi, are you gen z or millennium or <laughs> i am millennium but calling me a gen z may be um it, it's flat it, it, it's a compliment that means why i am you want that Kalo i eat every day is doing a great job <laughs> <laughs> me. yeah i think that um first of all there as as bad as this looks um we the fact that we have consumed this report before it's tabled in parliament and it no, has it was tabled, um but well not discussed in parliament <laughs> yeah um the way we would have expected it to be given how scandalous it looks uh, means that um we have an opportunity as, as as citizens to continue to lead the fight because where we are in uganda uh in a context where laws are abused misused or in many cases disregarded um uh, to cater for political and personal interests we are left to the court of public opinion but also pressure from the public that we can choose to ignore now but it will force those in positions of power to take a side and in the least make a decision and there's an opportunity for the state to really demonstrate in action their commitment that they keep talking about uh, in terms of its fight against corruption not once not twice i do not know how many times this year the head of state has made public statements about his commitment to fight corruption and so in a scandal like this one where names have been mentioned um how is the law going to be applied equally to those that have been cited uh, obviously in our Ugandan context, we have seen that government agencies are many times not the best placed to prosecute corruption. And I say this as a follow up to what I mentioned earlier about political corruption, because it is led by the political elite and many times it also has arms and legs to the policymakers themselves. And so the custodians of law and legal processes in our state are, uh, find themselves compromised. And so the ability to make decisions on issues are very much um, rooted in, in, in our politics of patronage and allyship, you know, um, um, who butters my bread. And if I make a decision uh, that is likely to rattle the feathers of the one that butters my bread, what is the implication for me? And so you find many times, even while we have an opportunity to make decisions and, drast and take drastic measures that demonstrate actual commitment, we fail to do so. And so it defeats um, the purpose. It defeats the purpose for which we have these laws in place. And for me, in the recent times, I celebrate the urgency with which citizens are leading the fight against corruption. They've got into a place where they are fearless. They've got into a place where they're saying, you know what, enough is enough. And I keep saying that you undermine the power of young people in this age and era at your own risk. This is the elite class that we educated several years ago. And the fruits of that education is beginning to manifest. They are not living in the era in which we lived where whereas information existed access was not as permissible as it is today uh, we didn't have so many opportunities to learn across borders about how to organize but they do and they have every tool in their hands to wash you out dry they may not get actions outside of you as quickly as they should but the impact of their voice their agency their involvement in a fight will have long 
lasting uh, effects on those implicated in these scandals, whether within or without. And so I believe that that is going to be one of the opportunities. And if the state really cares about its legitimacy, if it cares about its reputation, it should uh, decide to forego uh, some of its uh, political interests and take action, especially where information is readily available. Mm. Yeah. Agatha, do you feel uh, vindicated with the exhibitions and Agoa because you you had exhibited these things uh, as as one of the principles there, and and now Parliament itself is pointing out parliamentarians that that uh, you could say have taken money. Okay, you you have said this again. I don't know if Parliament is the one that has pointed mm. out in in their report. Well, in their report, <laughs> <laughs> they listed parliamentarians. That's why they refused to debate it because it was about parliamentarians. Uh. But yeah, yeah, the indication really, uh, and we didn't need it um, because uh, I tell people every day that we do this when we are convinced that there is information. We we verify it, we, we double check it, so we always know that the, that these are things that um, that we should do, that no one can 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 dispute, they fail to dispute them during the exhibition or the, the information we put out there and resorted to just personal attacks, so it, it's, I think every day more Ugandans um, get to realize that what the, the the type of leaders we have and uh, the phrase we are on our own that Ugandans started saying some time back gets more and more real each day. It must be the reason these young people that uh, I saw the letter, their response to police today and uh, they were telling police who were actually not asking for your permission to go and protest because the law allows us to go and, uh, and 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 march. We are exercising our right. The courts have uh, have twice said that that we can do that. That for you, your job, we are telling you so that you come and ensure that there is peace. Now, I see that determination from young people, uh, from people that uh, everyone had been saying the youth of this country are not participating in their affairs enough. Um, others have been saying Uganda is not Kenya. For us, they can. Um, <laughs> Even a Kenyan said, what? <laughs> Even a Kenya says that Kenya is not Uganda. That for us, they can do this and 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 loot the country and and steal from us, and 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 that's what we really have done. That when there is, when um, so many billions, sixty-four billion, and whatever is stolen. You are trying to tell people that all the problems you, you have could have been solved by half if that money had been put where it is supposed to put to be put. You're telling them that the, the health center in, uh, next to you that has no doctor, that has no medicine, could have medicine. Or the women that go to hospital and find a list that, you know, we don't have a surgical plate, we don't have this and that, it could be there. And and Ugandans are, are getting aware of that. It's, it's gratifying when you're a journalist because that's mm. what you are supposed mm. to do. Inform people, give them information, empower them to take decisions that are informed. And um, so every day that, that, that gets reinforced that now we are seeing young Ugandan saying enough is enough no one is going to come to our rescue not the president of this country not the IGG whose mandate is to um, fight graft not the anti-corruption courts which you know tomorrow they are told to acquit and uh, or the DPP to withdraw to withdraw charges so 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 then that for me is uh, is what what is very gratifying that each day we since you get you realize that more people have been informed more people have been sensitized mm. more people are thinking of what can we do what steps can be taken if these other avenues um have not worked we need to think of other ways mm. yes dr mumza what's what's the way forward is it going to be one of those cases a lot of who are and then it dies down you've seen a lot of these in i guess i, I think even if it dies out you don't want to lose um, what doctors will cherish from a post-mortem report 
<laughs> it may be a failure report that person is dead but how do you extend this to what owner was emphasizing mm. to, to, to curb the gross systemic lack of governance in systems so you want to draw out of this to say why do we follow up with this there are many other lessons we can roll out elsewhere already we have said this is a report of october 2023 so how do we make sure such reports again don't sit undiscussed and tabled and acted upon but also now when you look through they might have <coughs> mentioned the parliament and you might say the members of parliament and now they are beginning also to go to the technocrats the report is so full of other technocrats mm. who are involved in it but uh, you also don't want to go to a technocrat and then fail to change the system in within the mainstream functionality of government to curb others and maybe even to bring out others that are out there owner here has mentioned the the Teso people the, the, the war claims on cattle Teso, really in Teso, Teso, Teso mm. cooperative society the claim was nine billion it was paid but they received one billion now those are things you want to cure why should the compensation they, they, what the claim was the claim was nine billion yeah. which was paid but the, they received the society billion. received one billion now maybe yeah. the, the eight billion is hanging there so those somewhere are th those are things you want to look at that even if we are resurrecting <laughs> a dead cooperative can we first resurrect it fully so that it has a management a structure mm -hmm. and i saw that as one of the recommendations of saying strategy when you get the money what are you going to do with it mm -hmm. that demands you first have it registered it happens an account it has either a board or whoever put those things in place let's not miss out this because once you haven't done them and you are ready yeah. to release the money a lawyer will receive it on their behalf then the lawyer will decide what should i pay myself and then he'll realize guys it's actually me who created and as you. Masi said they, 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 they already they facilitated the process yeah. <laughs> yes. and they're already on a retainer so, <laughs> you want to have all these sorted out from this report so for me even if i wasn't looking at what court and dpp and the others are doing there are so many other government agencies that should trigger into action mm. to begin learning and drawing from this report to put things right who should constitute a committee how do you determine the losses because clearly the report shows some of the losses were because of the economic turmoil mm. now these were are these supposed to be compensated because even us our parents and fathers and businesses mm. all suffered due to this economic turmoil mm. how do you deal with these uh, coffee farmers whose yield is fell from 466 metric tons to 32 because of the economic turmoil not that because anybody stole yeah. Yeah, well, should I compensate that as well? But we draw lessons. Which lessons should also be speaking to are we having similar economic situations that are ruining these very same entities? Cooperatives were not actually closed or collapsed. The new economic environment could not just allow them to survive because of their nature of operation. And that was part of the liberalization agenda. Let the best fight and win. <laughs> Remove the weak ones, let them get out of the system. And the cooperatives really went out. Cooperative bank was not closed. The closer is because it had collapsed. But in the banking system, you don't allow something to collapse on its own. It was you, you manage its fall. <laughs> but you, that, that's what people will call closer. But literally, it has failed to live. It is like uh, a patient who really doctors will decide, mm. can we send this one to sleep? That's what the process the central bank did. But it had failed to manage that environment. And up to today, here people wanting a cooperative bank mm -hmm. saying government help us to reestablish it. No, it's not government which establishes banks or helps them to come in. You, the criteria is clear. Set yourselves up and come back. So mm -hmm. the lessons, even for the cooperative union, I see they haven't learned their lessons. They still think they must subsist <coughs> on charity from government, which is not going to be there. Mm -hmm. Because this government, even if it was charitable and willing, the capacity to really handhold such a system is not going to be there. Ah, let me have Samuju have last word on, on this one. No, I, 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 before Samuju, you, you want to I squeeze in a comment? Mm -hmm. yeah, he has now learned that. From my experience, he has learned that Teso got one billion. I'm supposed to have the corporate that was not in cattle. Look, I, I wanted to look at the bigger picture. My experience, both in government and now in the private sector, is that the propensity to to take more is inherent in human beings 
the crisis is that uh, in government, unlike in the private sector, you don't have the system to hold off people's hands from the, the good thing. And I don't see corruption being defeated until when we have, I don't know how we can grow that kind of system whereby there is no single individual who has the liberty to get money as they wish. I know we have systems that ideally should be the laws and all that should be making that, uh, that, should, that should make that happen. But then there is, no, there, there is a lot of collusion. You know? Those who are supposed to check the other are not doing it because they have common interest. And uh, sometimes I dream of uh, maybe, maybe the, the government system as we have it is not working you know, in terms of controlling money. Can we do something to externalize it to, is it to the private sector, which has always been demonized, but not the usual private sector, which is created by individuals, the way we are seeing cooperatives being created. Uh, can we have legitimate companies that have shareholders who care about reputation, the companies that are listed, outsource some of this uh, financial control? Because the current system it's just, I think nobody's able to control it, you know. The president may wish certain things to happen, but there are people who have the ability to beat any system you put in there. Because if you have collusion with people in justice, people in finance, I don't know about Bank of Uganda, these are the axes that are supposed to control how government money is used. But clearly are seeing lawyers coming into the picture, both public and private. And it's just out of control. So I, I, I sort of say we can lament, we can change players, and I don't even think a uh, change of government is going to solve this problem. Maybe it's now become a disease. Mm. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Master says, let's try it first. <laughs> so, Honorable <laughs> Samuju. Uh, <clears throat> is there an opportunity for this paper to come back to Parliament? To do what? No. <laughs> it is now being implemented there as well. Mm. <clears throat> I think the, the... First of all, I'm not sure that the parliamentary investigation were exhaustive. Mm. I'm not sure. They, they are just an eye-opener. Uh, because if you're talking about uh, in the report of the Auditor General, the Auditor General reports about 139 billion people who are being charged i don't think they have been charged for anything uh, above 20 billion mm. so you need to get the rest of the people who put their hands on maybe about 120 billion and as i said earlier <coughs> um, <coughs> it was not possible for the mps who are choosed and maybe gerard dinner without the involvement maybe of the government lawyers and the minister of finance some of the money that was being given out actually came to parliament as, as supplementary budget we have argued over supplementary budgeting the law says these are things that are supposed to be uh, of any